station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And Houston, this is station. I am ready for the event. Administrator Brian Stein, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. I read you five by five, sir. NASA headquarters, SOC. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Mission, Mission Control, Houston, please call station for a voice check. Station, this is, this is General Jay Raymond. How do you hear me? I hear you five by five, sir. Good to hear your voice. I hear you five by five, sir. Good to hear your voice. Great to hear your voice. Colonel Mike Hopkins, it's great to see you. Great to be with you. Uh, this is a big day for NASA. It's a big day for the Space Force. Last month, uh, we celebrated 20 years of humans living and working in space on the International Space Station. And this month, uh, we celebrate the first anniversary of the U.S. Space Force. And a lot of times I get the question, how, how do NASA and the U.S. Space Force work together? Because we are very different organizations. But we also share the same domain. And of course, that domain is space. Um, well, here's the thing. NASA was organized in 1958 intentionally uh, by President Eisenhower to be a civilian agency focused on exploration and science. And he really wanted to focus us as an agency on diplomacy. Um, and of course, the Space Force has a very different mission. The Space Force has a mission of, of, of actually fighting and winning wars when necessary in space. Of course, uh, the primary goal of the Space Force is to make sure that those wars are never necessary. Um, and so it's important for us, as we think about the future of space, to make sure that it is secure for the future, that it is preserved. And of course, we have a lot of cooperation with the Space Force when it comes to things like orbital debris, um, mitigation, orbital debris. Um, we talk about how we do space situational awareness and space traffic management. Uh, we talk about launch support, range clearance, weather. Uh, there's a lot of areas where the U.S. Space Force and NASA collaborate. And yet here we have this civilian agency that is uh, really about diplomacy and reaching out to the international community and doing stunning things on behalf of, of science and technology and exploration. But I'll tell you something that's amazing, and this has been true really since the dawn of of of, of the space age. And that is that military pilots uh, have a history at NASA of performing that science. And of course, that was enshrined in the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which explicitly says that, um, that space agencies like NASA are not prohibited from having military service members doing science on behalf of civilian agencies. And so we're, we're grateful for so many years of military personnel uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, um, and Coast Guard. And now we're talking about the sixth branch of the military, that being the Space Force, uh, serving on board the International Space Station. You know, right now we have 60% of our astronaut corps that come from the military. Uh, and in fact, 35% of the astronaut corps are currently active duty military personnel, men and women. Uh, doing great work on behalf of their country, leading a science organization, and at the same time uh, being in military service, temporarily assigned to NASA to do civilian science work. So this is really a, a, a great partnership um, between the Department of Defense and NASA. We are so grateful um, when the Department of, De of Defense allows us to utilize the great talent from the military to serve our agency. And it, you know, it used to be just you know fighter pilots and test pilots, but now we've got engineers, we've got doctors from the military uh, that come to NASA for a temporary period um, and work for this civilian agency to do science. And so uh, today um, we're going to see uh, Colonel Michael Hopkins do a volunteer transfer uh, from from the United States Air Force to the United States Space Force, do it on the International Space Station. Um, and this is really a, a great moment, um, signifying that the partnership is strong um, and that the commitment that each of our organizations have to each other 
um, is is undeterred. And and again, as we go forward in this domain called space, uh, security is important, exploration is important, and we look forward to a long relationship uh, moving forward. So with that, I just want to say congratulations to Colonel Michael Hopkins. Um, and of course, I, I want to welcome, of course, uh, Secretary Barrett, Secretary of the Air Force, and of course, uh, the Chief of Space Operations, General Raymond, of course, uh, Colonel Michael Hopkins and your wife, Julie. Um, what, a, what a great day for, for all of you. Welcome to NASA headquarters. Um, and we're looking forward to, to watching this, this transfer from, from the Air Force to the Space Force. So with that, headquarters, I will turn this back over to you. Thank you, Minister Brian Stein, and thank you so much uh, for your words, for allowing us to be here. But more importantly, thank you for your leadership and for your partnership that we that we enjoy. Uh, as you said, we're, we're different organizations, but we operate in the same domain, and that partnership uh, provides both of us uh, great strength. Uh, so again, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for the privilege of being in the headquarters building and, and the privilege of being able to participate in such an historic uh, ceremony. You know, in the Space Force, we're coming up, we're just two days away uh, from our first birthday. And as I say in a lot of my talks, we're making history every single day. Uh, and today is, is nothing short of that as well. And we're really pleased uh, to have uh, uh, Secretary Barrett here with us uh, to, uh, to participate. Uh, Secretary Barrett's been a huge leader uh, for our Air and Space Forces, and it's made the establishment of the Space Force uh, the number one priority for the department. And, ma'am, we thank you for your leadership. Uh, but for, for Colonel Hopkins, the most important person in this room is sitting right next to me, and that's Julie. Uh, it's really nice to get a chance to, to meet Julie and uh, uh, have her here with us for this day. And it's, it's a big day, as we were talking about. This is a significant event. Uh, I know you have served many, many years uh, in the United States Air Force, and uh, this is a, a day not to be taken lightly, and we greatly appreciate uh, you volunteering to come over uh, to be in, in the United States Space Force. You know, as you look at it, as, as Administrator Bridenstine said, uh, every service has provided astronauts uh, to NASA. And so the, the very first uh, astronaut was uh, Al uh, Alan Shepard from uh, uh, the Navy. And the first uh, airman in space was Gus Grissom. Uh, the first Marine in space was John Glenn. And the first uh, Army officer that in space a astronaut was Robert Stewart. And today, uh, you will be the first, history-making, the first Space Force astronaut that will be living in space. And uh, we're really glad to have you on our team. We send uh, our best to NASA to serve this mission. And uh, I've done a review of your records. Uh, we, it was close. We had to do a quick scrub to make sure you were qualified. Uh, but, you know, you look at your, your background from uh, where you went to school, uh, captain of the football team, Olmstead Scholar, um, you know, flight uh, test school, uh, worked at the Rapid Capabilities Office. I had the first, the privilege of getting to know you at Air Force Space Command when you were the senior Air Force astronaut. And uh, I'll tell you, you've been nothing short of spectacular. Uh, and we couldn't be happier to have you on our team. And so after a scrub of your records and a, and a close vote, uh, we've all decided we'd love to have you. And uh, if you're okay and you're ready to do this, uh, First of all, if you would do us a favor and make sure uh, you pass along to your crew uh, our best regards. Uh, we were all happy to be there for your launch. It's a career highlight to be able to, to see you the day before you launched and, and see you and your crew. We're excited for you. We're excited for what you're doing for our nation. And uh, if you're ready to do this, uh, we're ready to transfer you into the United States Space Force. Sir, I am ready to make the leap. Raise your hand and repeat after me. I state your name, having been appointed a colonel in the United States Space Force, do solemnly swear that I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon I'm about to enter. So help me God. I, Michael Scott Hopkins, 
having been appointed a colonel in the United States Space Force, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Um, the best dressed astronaut on orbit, too. Love your shirt. Thank you, sir. I think there's a couple people there that uh, you can thank for that as well. Uh, Nick and Katie uh, managed to get this out to me, so uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, I did want to say thank you to Secretary Barrett uh, for being here today for this ceremony. And I'd also like to thank Secretary Barrett and the Air Force for the last 27 and a half years. Uh, it has been an incredible experience, a privilege, and Julie and I are going to cherish that time forever. Uh, Administrator Bridenstein, I'd like to thank you for allowing those of us in the military to continue to serve our military branches and yet at the same time have the opportunity to be a part of NASA's unique and very exciting mission to explore our universe, to send the next people to the, back to the moon and then on to Mars. General Raymond, sir, it is an honor. And I can't say thank you enough for giving me an opportunity to join the nation's newest branch of the military and uh, also to, be, to join a, uh, a unique elite team uh, that's going to be making history. For my family, thank you for all the support over the years, and specifically uh, Julie, Ryan, Lucas. The adventure continues. Thank you all. Semper Supra. Michael Hopkins, um, Colonel Michael Hopkins of the United States Space Force, congratulations on an amazing career. Um, and you're the first uh, member of the United States Space Force to serve on the International Space Station, but it's a guarantee that you will not be the last. Um, there's many more to come. Um, and in fact, we're looking forward to all the branches of the military uh, having astronauts walk on the surface of the moon and then the next question is, which branch will be the first to step on the surface of Mars? <laughs> so there's a, there's a bright future in front of us. And again, to Secretary Barrett and to General Raymond, I just want to thank you for providing the talent that NASA has in space um, and, and continuing this very important relationship. Uh, even as our missions are different, um, there's a lot of overlap in the capabilities and the technology and, of course, the talent. So uh, this has been a, a great event. Uh, congratulations again to Colonel Michael Hopkins and, and Julie and your whole family. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Houston. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Congratulations, Hopper. Thank you. I can't believe I uh, woke up this morning to find Colonel in the Space Force. Awesome day.